Dakota snow tomorrow, pupper. We are now in the beginning of February, and it's been a little bit because it's just been, uh, well, so cold out, you know, minus 10, minus 20 and all, so just tough to, tough to get out and work on things. I have been riding around on the blaster, and I, I have a few more things that need to get done. So put it together, been riding around, um, probably have a couple of hours on it, but we've noticed, or I've noticed a few things here. One, uh... After you ride around for an hour or so, you've got to add clutch fluid. The reason for that, you've seen in other videos, it smokes like a chimney. One thing I didn't do in here, I didn't do the seals. And undoubtedly, the crank seal, if not other seals, are bad to the point that the clutch oil is making it into the bottom of the cylinder, burning off and all that. Because I'm not leaking out the bottom. You can even see from this fresh snow, nothing's leaking out. Um, so I'm burning it all off. So I'm going to end up you know, taking this off and doing all those seals really for the low cost of a full set of seals. I really should have done that, not made any assumptions when I was first doing the motor. The other thing I need to address, I've got to address the clutch after riding around for a while. Uh, it really, the, the clutch armature stopped working. Down here... It has just, it's just not, really it's not returning. A little tough to see. Uh, underneath here within the armature, it was pretty beat up down in the case. And I'm wondering if the push rod has been able to slip past the paddle and the armature's kind of slipped off the side because the inside of this aluminum case was really beat up. So I've got to pull the motor, go one more time, and I'm going to take another look at this. It's possible I may need to get down here with some high temp JB weld to kind of uh, tighten up the tolerances if I find that that clutch push rod did slip past the armature because all this is moving but I can pull that clutch and it doesn't disengage so you start it in neutral and you can shift through all the gears without clutching um, but you can't clutch you're just going to stall out so got to deal with that and this is getting dealt with I have an OEM lever so this one that gets clacks right in here because this just doesn't work I'm getting an OEM lever on here and we'll get that straightened out with any luck after that, we're running reliably. Uh, wasn't anticipating the clutch, you know, having a little issue there. Obviously, there's more to do down the road, but for a trail bike, you know, okay. I will say this. This blaster is peppy. Lots of low end on this one. It's fun with the uh, the paddle tires. can really just rip around in the snow. Really, even with a blaster, I think factory clearance is 4, 4.3 inches, somewhere around there. I can just crank through 5 inches of snow and just barely drag the back, which makes for a lot of fun. This one feels more sluggish. Um, we'll see. Um, it's got the Tumi, all of that on there. Same OEM carbs, uh, 230 main jets. I haven't figured out why. This guy's got a lot of low end pep. This one's sluggish. Yeah, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pull the motor again. Uh, so we'll pull the plastics off, pull the motor, um, bring that in the shed where I have a little bit of heat. We'll split that case again. And we're gonna find out um, if I can do a repair job on that um, on that case down in there. Cause getting case halves, it's tough to find case halves. And case halves are expensive. Um, and a lot of them still have damage on them, so we're gonna we're gonna take some time, assuming I don't freeze. <laughs>
probably. So just to keep my legs and arms in? Or try to not hit the tree. Alright, I've split the motor and as I suspected, right, right there underneath the screwdriver, all of that is goobered out. That's all aluminum casing that's been chiseled out there. What happens, the push rod coming through the clutch, as it goes through it should be pushing on the paddle, or excuse me, the paddle should be pushing on this rod. So when you pull the clutch, it moves this way, um, disengages the, the clutch uh, plates in the clutch basket. But what has happened is that this paddle is able to push and skip past the edge of this rod because it's all sitting in this goobered out space here. So I'm going to look to see if I can use my bearing puller, pull this bearing, and I'm going to see if I can build this up with some form of JB weld. Otherwise, it's a case half, and case halves are tough to come by. We're also going to be replacing case seals. In particular, this seal here, the clutch side seal uh, around the crank, this is the one that we're anticipating is leaking to the extent that this clutch oil is making it down into the bottom of the lower case, burning off, and what making is making this thing smoke like a chimney. So we're doing all the seals, both crank seals, going to do it all. But for now I'm going to set this up, see if I can pull this bearing and uh, get down underneath here and see if there's anything I can do to build up some material here, clean this up and uh, rectify that issue. All right, bearing is out. I'll tell you though, I had to go and customize this bearing puller <clears throat> because uh, one, one collet was way too small and this one was too big, so I had to take it to my grinder. Open it up and show you here. I had to go take my collet to the grinder and get it a little smaller, but it works well now. It's just the tolerances were just sloppy. Having pulled that bearing, I can see down in here more, and all of the uh, all of the dark you're seeing through here. That's the other side of this case repair that was done. So there's a there's a lot here. I'm going to have to find a way to try and build this up. Closer inspection, what I think is that the case continued to fragment out and get stuck, and that's why the return action didn't work. So I put the, the armature back in here, and you see this little dimple right here. That's where this rod, and it's the other end of this rod, should be pressing and pushing just like that. And when you activate the clutch, pull this way, push the rod up. We don't want to slip past anything here. Back to there. Ideally, this rod is sitting not on the edge like that, but on this paddle, but all this missing material it's creating that issue, so I am going to work to build that up a little bit. And then I may need to use my air, air die here and grind out a little bit. But that is what we are looking to repair here. Alright, so used uh, JB Weld steel stick. Mash some of this together on our fingers. Worked it all down in here, 
and to kind of help form it up I put the armature down in so I could push this all up against the armature that does mean it's got a little bit of a half moon lip on the top here so once this cures and it needs an hour to cure but we're gonna let it set up overnight we'll come back in and we will take just the edge off at that point we should be good we'll replace our seals and then we should be back in business we'll put our bearing back in and uh yeah we'll clean up our old gasket and we're going to give this another go all right fast forward next afternoon after work there we are i did take my tool and clean that up just a little bit here's the action now tell you what i'm bothered by though I see movement. I know I got some loose shards in there, but that whole thing flexes. Yep, and I just put the screwdriver down in there and it molded well, but it did not bond to the aluminum. So I'm gonna have to get this aluminum cleaner and roughed up to make a better bond. Hmm. All right, so the steel stick, for whatever reason, didn't work well. It, it didn't bond to the case, so it all came out in one piece. So I've gone to a classic JB Weld, cold weld formula. And what we'll end up having to do after this cures and sets up is going in with the grinder, kind of cleaning it up. Probably going to have to sandpaper just a little bit around the bearing race here. Just to clean it up. It's a little hard to get in there. Um, but I did take this and clean this up and, you know, gasoline and just trying to get all the oil and contaminants out of there so we get a good bond. So we'll let this set up overnight. I think this stuff needs 15 hours or so. And we'll come back again tomorrow, try and clean that up and see if we are, see if we got something. And this, this is the clutch side. So this is, this is the seal. It's been causing all the challenges. Let's pull that out. I'm not going to worry about wrecking it on the way out here, I suppose. There it is. I mean, sometimes it's hard to tell, but it definitely seems there's a different hue to the rubber on the inside. Kind of showing for rubbing. Crank seal, that should get rid of all that extra smoking. And here's what we're putting in. We've got a tusk set. We also have a tusk uh, gasket set we're gonna put in. So we'll replace all these gaskets. Now you know something as I pull these gaskets out? This is the bad gasket from the crank side. This is the new one. And one thing that I've noticed, the spring is gone. Would have been on this side. There's no spring in this gasket as well. They would have kept this rubber tight, so that could have been a part of the, the problem. Who knows where? Who knows where that spring went? Kind of weird to have that just pop out, but not there.
All right, guys, here we go. Motor's back in, everything's back in. A couple of bolts still to tighten down, but let's see if we can kick it over, fire, make sure the clutch, all that works, and see if we have less smoke coming out the back now that we have all new seals. And uh, yeah, we'll do that before we get dumped on with snow here. swap off the paddle tires off of my blaster onto this one because on the ice in the snow uh, there's no traction but it rolls through all the gears starts stops clutches working so uh yeah so i was about to do a fast swap a roo out here and just uh take the wheels and rims off bolt them right onto the hubs and I just learned that on this uh, blaster I've been doing, it's got a 4x115 bolt pattern instead of the stock 4x100. Uh, this thing's got, uh, looks like this thing might have Banshee, Banshee hubs, or, or at least hubs off of almost any other Yamaha. Uh, Warrior, Banshee, Raptors, splines are all the same, so I should be able to swap these just by... Uh, uh, just by swapping the hubs but stock that's a four by 100 and it's tough to find good rims uh for these especially if you're shopping for aluminum they just get really pricey but if you swap out to the four by 115s raptors banshees warriors and that same splines this is a much more uh common pattern especially with atvs being manufactured currently but because of that i can't reuse so we'll just uh we'll take the hubs and we'll swap it over so we can get in the snow and play. All right, let's try this again. We, now we have the uh, paddle tires on, on the four by 100 uh, hubs. So uh, yeah, let's get out in the snow and let's, uh, let's start breaking this thing in. It's not so great so guys I'm happy with it it's uh, I, I tell you what I really understand now what the difference in some of these these pipes uh, is that uh, some guys are talking about for example on my other blaster I have an FMF uh, power core 2 pipe and people call that a, a low mid-range pipe and they call this to me a, a high range pipe so high rpm and I can feel it on this one when I get into the high rpm and this thing hits the power band this thing wants to take off and it's a very different feel from the way my other one is set up because that power band is lower it's a lower mid-range pipe I'd never felt that before but when this one hooks up it it hooks up a uh, little covered in snow, but uh, it's a blast out here. Everything's holding together. So I, I did try to ride a little yesterday with uh, just, you know, you know, dirt dirt tires on the rear and I couldn't get around in this snow. It's, it's light, it's fluffy, it's four inches, there's ice underneath, but I couldn't get any traction. But with these paddle tires, I, I can hook up and I can rip around here. So I'm going to keep breaking the motor in uh, one other thing I'll call out which has proven to be important uh, so on my other blaster I have deleted the tours but I had the tours block still hooked up and yesterday I was plowing through snow and I got enough snow around that tours block that everything iced up and seized and my throttle seized wide open uh, which is a little spooky so fortunately uh, killed the motor quick before it tried to run away but 
with everything frozen up, I couldn't start it to get it home. <laughs> so that was an adventure. So if you're doing the tours delete, you know, and this is a Vito's kit, but having the whole block deleted off the top so you have a more traditional, you know, uh, top and cable pull on here. Um, mine had iced up my, my whole block. So I'm hoping that this setup um, will be better for the uh, throttle. So both the blasters have this setup now. I just did mine yesterday because, yeah, throttle's icing up wide open. A little spooky. Look at how bad is packing in. Ah, oh, that'll make for a block of ice. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for this one. But uh, yeah, continuing to ride around. Uh, I do really like where the power band hooks up on this one. I, I had complained earlier before I tore the motor down that this one was really quite sluggish, you know, compared to mine, which I always ride there. But I, I'm gonna rethink some of this because if, I gotta rethink some of this because the power band here, uh, I love when that kicks in, that just rips. And you're at like half throttle and it just opens up. So I think uh, I'm gonna try and return this <laughs> before, I, before I break it and fix it again. Um, I've been jumping it, it's been landing fine, but I keep landing in the basket. And it doesn't tickle when your backside lands on that metal ridge right there. So, and coming soon, as I start to get the warm weather here, I have picked up the next project. So I am super excited to start getting into that, but I'm waiting for the warmer weather because I build outside and it's a complete basket case. So I kind of want to tear into it and discover what's missing uh, all at once. So I'm just kind of saving the excitement for a little bit. So, yeah. Until next time, I'm gonna call this one done.